Hey guys, welcome back to my series on how to build a responsive website from scratch. Today we're going to be focusing on this portfolio section. So we're going to build this cool grid, put a little hover effect in so we can click on the link to find out more about the projects. Before I really jump into that, I just want to say thanks so much for watching uh, so far. I hope you've liked the series so far. If you have, don't forget to hit the little like button on this video. It really helps me out. And leave a comment below. Let me know if I've been doing things properly, if it's been easy to understand, or if you'd like any more explanation on things. Also, this series is going to be wrapping up pretty soon. I got this video and one more left after that for the two sections down at the bottom. Uh, so if you have any suggestions for other things you'd like to see, leave them down below in the comments and I'd be glad to uh, take a look at those going forward. But enough about all that, let's uh, actually start looking at what we have here. So I've already gone and done the HTML a while back. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's number one. There should be a little thing you can click on somewhere on the screen now to go see. Basically, I built a nice big section, a uh, class portfolio on there, I put a title on it, and then I put in a bunch of figures. Uh, inside each figure uh, is a class of, it's a port item, portfolio item. I have my image in there, which is there, and then I have a fig caption. And my fig caption is the little title here, as well as my big button. Now this button, I want to be a small button, and I never actually got around to creating a style for small buttons. So why don't we start with that right now? Uh, I'm just coming in here. I'm going to find where all my other buttons are. There we go. Um, so let's just put my button small right here. So button small. And for that, all I think I need to change is my font size. So let's just do a nice little font size of, let's try 0.6 rem. And it's not working because I have my media query down here. Um, so basically this class, let's just bring this up then. That's not a big deal. Um, basically what was happening is it was saying my font size for button small should be 0.6 and then my button size should be 1.5. So because this was lower down in my CSS, it was winning. There we go. And whoa, 0.6 is too small. Well, before I say that for sure, well, it is too small, but uh, I am going to bring up my responsive and just set this up to be uh, the phone size. I'm at 100%. Uh, and let's just make that a little bit bigger. That should be pretty good, except um, the f I'm also going to increase the font weight because that's at that font size, it's kind of small. Uh, let's just go with a 700. I think that'd be easier to read. It's hard on the white right now, but it's not going to stay on white. It's going to come on top of our picture. Now, a few things that are going on. Let's just take a quick look. Um, well, I do need uh, some space here to push. You know, I, I'm glued to the top there. I'm going to move that down. Um, these aren't the full size, and this is a, a strange little thing. If I look in here, um, let's just make that a little bit bigger. I'll make these font sizes a bit bigger. Um, figures, for whatever reason, have, um, where is it? Um, a margin on the left and the right by default. And it's point four, is it 40? Uh, yeah, margin start, margin end, the left and right. It comes as a user agent style sheet where they're just, they have that. Um, so I am gonna have to turn that off. Uh, I'm just gonna do all that down in my portfolio CSS, which I probably don't have anything for yet. Um, so for my portfo portfolio, I do, uh, the first really quick thing we'll do is just figure uh, margin zero. We shouldn't need any margins on them and right away that helps it with there, it goes full size. Uh, we can just come and this is my ba -ba -ba portfolio. Margin of let's say top margin with an R, uh, top and bottom, 3m and left and right zero just to give us some space up top there whoop i closed that but i don't want to i want to keep that opened okay so the next thing i want to do is move my uh these things on top of the picture so we have a little bit of work to do but it shouldn't be too much um let's go and grab my port item so I want my portfolio items uh, really important. They need to have a position of relative to be able to uh, move things prob prob probably properly inside of there. 
Um, and so let's leave that like that and then come and say my, did I give them a class? Figure image, fig caption is my port description. Uh, I should be port item. I shouldn't change this. I should change this to port item. My port item will have the margin of zero. Oh, did I really do it like that? Port. My figure is my port item. I can put all this together. That's silly of me. Okay, and then my port descrip description uh, will have a position of absolute. So let's just save that and see what happens. Port description, it's not port description, it's port description like that, nice and short. Um, and then it disappears. So I do believe I'm going to need to do, oh, it's underneath. Z index 100. Ah, there we go. So now they're on top. So that's good. Um, I'm going to say bottom of 1M, left of 0, right of 0, just to center it. Whoop, why did it? Oh, I forgot my. There we go. Okay. So the bottom is 1M off the side. The bottom, I'm going to make that a bit bigger actually. Let's make that 3M just to move it up a little bit. And I'm gonna do a couple more things. Let's change my uh, color to white. And now let's give this a background, a background of RGBA, because I want it to be transparent. And we'll do black, zero, 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 and not zero, uh, 0.25. No, much more, 0.75. Cool. Um, I'm going to say left also of 3M, 3M. I find it a bit weird that I'm sticking it to the sides there. So let's just see, that looks a little bit better. And we'll add a little bit of padding. Padding of 3M, let's see how that looks. That's too big, 1M. And I'm actually going to drop this down to like a two. Um, basically, I want to just be able to, you know, I'm thinking if I'm on a mobile device, I want to always be able to see the picture and this is just going to stay on the top all the time. That's inside a paragraph. This is, um, let's just do uh, my port description paragraph has a margin of zero. Hmm. I just assumed that the space up there was coming from this, but it's not. Let's just do a padding bottom 1M, padding top 0.5M. Oh, I keep forgetting my semicolons, just to try and balance it out a little bit. I don't really like how that looks right now, though. Uh, what do I want to do? I think all I'm going to do here, uh, I put a margin of zero. Let's just do a margin of 1M. I can take off my padding top that way. That looks a little bit better. Um, I also have this really annoying little space underneath these. This is actually coming from these images. Um, there's just the annoying thing with images in general. Um, I'm going to say my port item images. Yeah, uh, port item. And so uh, anytime you have images and they're the only thing, port item image. So if you have an image and it's only an image inside a div, because they're inline block by default, um, there's this little space that comes up underneath all images to uh, account for the descenders on text, you know, something like uh, on, down here, the p letter P has this thing sticking down. So if the image was in with the text, it would take in that into account, but in this case, we don't need it. So if an image is all by itself, the simple thing is just to do a display block. Uh, the whole purpose of it being inline block isn't really needed in this case, and we can stick them together nicely. Cool. It sort of fits with, we have this nice dark thing there and we get into these. I think it looks fine. And normally the project titles would be a little bit more varied too. So I think that looks pretty good. The real fun of this is gonna start once we start getting up to bigger screen sizes.
because there it looks okay. Uh, but once I get to a bigger screen size and it's not on a phone anymore or a tablet, I do want these to um, disappear and it's only on hover that they appear. And also I want to turn this into a grid because obviously my pictures aren't big enough even for it to work right now. Uh, so we have a few little things to do. We want to make it be able to turn into a grid. So uh, where's this actually breaking at about six, just over 600 pixels. Okay, so uh, we need my at media, not media, great, undo media. Uh, we need that and that. And I don't know quite where this is going to be. So let's do a min width of, we'll start with 30 rem. And we'll come in here with our port item. And my port item is going to have a width of 50%. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> cool. So it works. Uh, except it's hap yeah, it's happening. It's happening at 500 pixels, which I think is fine-ish. Let's make that 35. That's better. I like that. We can keep it single. Jumps up. So that's cool. Um, actually, let's bring that up to 40. Can we get away with 40? We can definitely get away with 40. Oh, we can't. Okay. 37. Of course, this really depends on my picture size. Um, but I think that looks pretty good there. And then we want it to jump up to a two column. So they're there. They're also going to need to float to the left. There we go. So now they're at 50%. Super. And of course, when I get to the even bigger screen sizes, I am going to want that to change as well, where we're going to want it to break into a grid of three. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And that one, I think I'm just going to do it my standard one that I've been doing for everything of 60 rem. And it's going to be at 33.3333334. And I don't need the float left. It's always floating left because of this one over here. And there we go. So I have it in a grid like that. And then that grid will, will snap. And I have two. And then that will snap and go to one. Super great. Um, I'm not super actually happy with this little overlay that I have here. But uh, I'm going to leave it there for now because that's it is what I want it to look like at the bigger screen size. Um, so at the 60 here, there's a few other things that I'm going to want to do though. I'm going to want my um, port description. Pretty much I want to move it away. I want it to be off that space. So uh, I'm, I'm going to move it down. So it's not inside this block anymore. It's too far down. So I'm going to do a transform translate y. So Y axis is up and down. And let's just try 150%. And there we go. So they all moved down like that. Obviously, the problem is I can still see what's going on. So on my port item, I'm just going to do an overflow of hidden. And now I can't see them. So if they're not inside that box, they're now hidden. And what I can do, which is always fun, is a port item hover my port description will do a transform and it will do a tra uh, translate y again but it will go to zero percent so when i hover on top except a hover won't work because i'm in responsive view uh, doo -doo -doo. so when i hover on top bang it appears like that and that i'm pretty happy with Hmm. Actually, let's just go back up here. Bottom zero, left zero. I don't need, well, I'll keep the M's. I don't really need them, but I'll keep them. And let's just see, that looks a little bit nicer, right? Eh? And we'll add my padding bottom of like two. Hmm, I like that a lot more actually. Now the only problem is I don't want it jumping and just snapping into place like that. I want it to transition. Um, I could put my transition just on my port item, or port description, I mean, but I like having everything have the same transition on a site. So up here where I have everything selected, I'm going to add a little transition. 
Uh, so we're transitioning all properties. We'll just do a nice ease in out and it'll be 250 milliseconds, which is sort of the default that I tend to use most of the time. So now when I hover over anything, you get that nice little transition word. Whoop, 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 whoop. I think that looks pretty cool. And then on the responsive ones, so once we get down to the two where someone's on their tablet, it's going to look like that. Hmm. And then that will drop down and get to a single, and it will look like that. Maybe this is too dark. Uh, let's just jump back down there. There's something that's sort of bugging me about these. Point six. Yeah, there we go. I like that a lot more. It was just really taking everything away from it a little bit. So we have this nice sort of grid here now, and this could obviously be more than six pictures. This could I could add as many pictures as I want to this grid, and it's going to keep working all the time, which is nice and fun. And then it collapses and it collapses down. Um, so I could technically uh, do something where when someone's on a mobile thing, if they were to click on it, this could sort of fade in. Um, but really, uh, if I'm on a mobile site and I'm just, I get to the top here, uh, or even, you know, I'm on a tablet, I get to here. If I just saw all those pictures there, I wouldn't always necessarily think of clicking on one. I know that sounds really weird. Uh, if you're a big time web user, you click on everything pretty much, especially you're on a site like this. But for usability's sake, um, you know, someone technically could get here and then just scroll past it without ever even knowing they could get more on more details for these projects. So I do like keeping it um, for UX reasons, just make it really clear that those are things they can click on. But of course, uh, if I get to it on a normal screen and I'm I have to hover, so the hover effect uh, for me, I don't mind having the, the nice little hidden hover effect on those. Um, so yeah, I think that looks pretty, pretty cool, and I think we did that pretty quickly. So I'm really happy with that and how it turned out. Project details, uh, they're not going to link anywhere for now because it's not really a real site, but it's looking pretty awesome. Uh, and if you were to do this, you could link it off to your own thing. So yeah, if you like this video, please go down and hit the like button because that would make me very, very happy. And uh, leave a comment. Please say hi, say hello, ask any questions you've got and uh, or recommend things you'd like to see me try. This video is almost done. The series is almost done. We're wrapping it up. We're getting near the end. I only have one video left and then it's on to other cool stuff. So, uh, but we're not quite there yet. In the next video, we will be looking at down here, the call to action, which should be pretty easy to put together as well as this footer. So we're, we're almost there. And one last time, don't be shy, say hi, go down. And until the next video, have yourself an awesome day and week. And I'll see you next week when the next one comes out.